I think that first person shooter is, is kind of you know the core of you know the the, the hunter killer kind of behavior in, in the human being. You know, you're designed to to hunt and and aim and shoot at stuff. So I think it's a very attractive genre for for most people. People you know get it really fast. And uh, then of course you can do that in many different ways. I think you know, for instance, Battlefield is, is one way of portraying this you know hunter killer. Uh, finding your prey and 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 uh, you know uh, hit it uh, with it, whatever weapon you're carrying. Um, you know the genre has is is actually it feels like everyone is trying to build the same game in a way because it's so deeply rooted in the human being, uh, and we all have our different uh, approaches on you know what's what's the right way of approaching this fantasy of war or a space war or whatever uh, fight you want to. Um, kind of simulate. You know, everyone is trying to build a first-person shooter. Is, is kind of trying to get the same emotion across, and I think it's very interesting to see how different companies or different people are trying to approach this from from different angles. Uh, we in the Battlefield series is of course focusing from our angle with a lot of destruction and strategic decisions and team play. I think it, we're all evolving towards the same kind of realism trying to get the player to be there to aim to shoot to see the result of your of your bullet and and create immersion at dice we generally we look at the competition but our aim is actually further you know the the the, the aim is often a couple of years ahead of what anyone is doing but you know, i think in general games are getting better at keeping the player focused around the first person experience you know we, you have less uh, less cutscene that take you out of the experience. You have more things happening with you and around you. Uh, we exper experimented a lot with this in when we did Mirror's Edge, for instance, where you keep the player in the first person movement at all times. You don't break that illusion. And of course, this is now being translated into the Battlefield series as well. Uh, so there's a lot of you know things you see in different games that adds to this experience, but uh, to be honest, there hasn't been you know quantum leaps when it comes to uh, first-person shooter. I, I see it as a as an evolution uh, from year to year, uh, which of course makes it even more challenging because it proves that we're all again trying to achieve the same thing. If you look at first-person shooters as a you know as one, uh, you could always argue that you know it has to do with technology. Um, and I definitely agree that technology is what gave us first-person shooters in the first place and it is what will drive first-person shooters to become more visceral and, and more intense and more real, so to speak. So, so one of the big challenges is since we're all trying to kind of find the, right, the sweet spot of realism in, in games, technology is what will, what will take us there if we have the right vision. I think all all new technology is often crude, and and it's there's a there's a threshold before you kind of get into the game, and you can, might get disturbed with just using something for the first time. The first time you use a mouse for for a PC, you know, it, it felt a bit you know odd to move this thing around on screen with this puck that you're holding in your hand. So I think you know control new controllers, new way of controlling the the game. You know we will see after a couple of years which will stick and which will just go away. Uh, I think 3D is also still on the rise. We will see how that works out in the end. I think it's a very interesting technique uh, and technology. But it's actually been around since the 50s uh, with you know red-blue glasses and stuff like that. So 3D is also something that everyone is trying to achieve uh, with or without glasses. I think in, in general the, the FPS genre has, has been broadened by the, the use of FPS. You can now play FPS games on your iPhone, but you can also play it on your high-end PC. And it's, it's actually the same experience, but rendered in, in a you know, higher or lower fidelity. So I think the, just the broadening of the genre, making it more accessible for, for more people, is, is, is definitely very interesting. And we can also see that even if we have this broad market, we also see that everyone is trying to kind of achieve the same you know, result. And you do that by, by introducing different things. So there's, there's partially a broadening, but there's also a streamlining of what first-person shooters should be and how they should play. So everyone is kind of evolving and turning into almost the same you know, control schemes, the same 
uh, field of view the same, you know, it sounds kind of the same, it looks kind of the same. We all know the same tricks. So it's actually harder today to find new tricks because we're all trying to achieve the same emotion. I think it's important to, for, for people that, that, that have played Battlefield before and, and our old Battlefield 2 fans to know that we're, we're really focusing on Battlefield 3 to make it the best possible Battlefield product that we've done to date. You know, we're, we're not aiming to let anyone down that is a hardcore Battlefield 2 fan, so you know, it will all be there.